Hey everyone, Canadian Rides 705 here. These are my top five modifications for the Indian Scout Bobber, and they mostly apply to the Indian Scout as well. Now there are a number of different recommendation lists for these bikes online, for all bikes really. Uh, what one person recommends, another person will likely not find as important or as useful. So I've taken the time to show these modifications on my own bike, which is a 2018 Scout Bobber. And I'm just giving this warning up front, you know, take these mods with a grain of salt. Research what different people have done and see where the trends are, uh, which mods seem to be the most important, which ones do you like the most, and make your decisions based on that. Don't just, you know, follow what I'm saying uh, because I sound reasonable. Make sure, you know, that it makes sense to you. And make sure that you've owned your bike for a little while. Make sure that you've ridden it uh, and gotten some use out of it before you decide what it is that you're going to do to it, uh, to modify it. Now, number one, uh, this mod is, and I'm making this mod number one, it really only applies to the Scout Bobber. And the reason I'm saying it first is because this one is a mod that I recommend doing fairly quickly. This sort of goes against the warning I just gave about riding your bike before you de decide what you want to do with it. But if you own the Bobber, uh, you'll know that the Bobber has the reduced size fenders on both the front and the back of the bike, uh, which is in fact what makes it a bobbed bike. And with the reduced front fender and the location of your radiator, I found that even during my break in miles, uh, that is, you know, when I first started riding the bike, I was seeing damage to the center of my radiator fins. Uh, without a fender to guard the radiator, it seems the tire, uh, especially the stock tires that come with the Scouts, which is the Kenda tires, they have a very aggressive design and they grab the dirt and the stones and it tends to throw it right at the radiator. Uh, so you'll see that uh you know even when you very first start riding it you're you'll see your fins on your rad getting flattened fairly quickly from gravel hitting it now there's a lot of options on how to guard this area the simplest one uh and this i almost did myself would just be to go to a hardware store find some heavy duty screen that allows airflow but is smaller than gravel you know and uh get some silicone or uh adhesive cement uh that will it adhesives uh, metal to plastic and just install that on the inside of your rad cover. Now I uh, did some research uh, before I went and did that and I was really impressed with the honeycomb look of the Clockworks Outrider Rad Guard cover. Uh, I was so impressed in fact that the hefty price tag on it didn't stop me from ordering it. It probably should have uh, but it didn't. Number two, uh, the first time I found myself riding the Scout at night uh, which is you know around when I first got it I was also riding in a rainstorm and I was in a very remote area. This was not the best time to discover that the stock headlight from Indian on the Scout is extremely dim. Uh, it was so terrible in fact that I strongly suspected it was defective. Now I had to do an 80 kilometer trip that night uh, in the rain and uh, I didn't, really didn't have a choice. The only place that I could stop was the place that I was going to. Um, and when I got there, I checked to make sure it was calibrated correctly and it wasn't just shining all of its light too high. And it was in fact correctly calibrated. So it, I just found it very, very disappointing. So an extensive check at the forums at IndianMotorcycle.net, uh, which I, you know, I frequent, uh, it got me the information I was looking for. The number one third party LED headlight recommendation is for the Eagle Lights brand light. It's a third party light called Eagle Lights. And the light that I chose uh, was the Eagle Lights Daymaker 2. Um, what you want is a 5 and 3 quarter inch headlight. Um, the stock Scout light uh, is that size as well. And it's fairly easy to replace without any additional parts uh, being required. Number three, and uh, this one is uh, by far my favorite. Not so much practical as uh, I just love the look of it. Uh, but I cannot speak highly enough of the fairing I installed on this bike. I absolutely love it. It is a Memphis Shades fairing, and at the time I got it, it was the newest addition to their product line. It's called the Cafe Fairing. It's uh, small enough to suit the bobber look and style, uh, but it's and it, you know it still allows the wind to hit you full bore in the arms and face. Um, the fairing is uh, it's not going to stop you from murdering hummingbirds with your face, as I can attest. However, uh, and this is what I love about it, it does stop a good percentage of the wind that would normally hit you in the chest making you feel that you're being pushed back off your bike. So once I had this installed, my day trips went from approximately 100 kilometers. Now, keep in mind, I was also a new rider. Um, but yeah, I was doing about 100 kilometer day trips. And then I got into doing just full day trips. I was doing four or 500 kilometers uh, in a single day. Um, they designed it as a single piece. 
Uh, so it looks like a tinted windshield, uh, which is mounted to the fairing body. And you can see it's actually, the fairing itself is actually one piece and it's all the same color as that transparent windshield area. And what they did was they used a, a black uh, screen print on the inside where it's not prone to damage from stones and weather. The attachment of the windshield uh, is actually like a fake paint line and a small groove in the material. So the fairing is much more strong and uh, more resilient as a single piece than if it were the multiple parts that it appears to be. So uh, some notes to know when you get a Memphis Shades fairing. If you're buying your first fairing, you'll need their installation kit. It doesn't ship automatically with a new fairing, which sounds kind of counterintuitive, but the reason why is because once you have the kit installed on your bike, the fairings themselves are uh, quickly and easily interchangeable. They have a quick release on the fairing that allows you to just unclip it from the bike and you can leave it off or you can switch it to a different Memphis Shades fairing. All of their fairings interchange with that stock installation kit. So needless to say, when you go to order one, you want to actually order the installation kit uh, with the fairing because they don't know uh, just because you're buying it if it's going on a bike that already has the kit or does not. Um, now for the Scout Bobber in particular, um, the other thing you will need to order from Memphis Shades is their turn signal relocation kit. So yeah, the, the kit just moves it down a couple of inches, but those inches are definitely necessary uh, to make the fairing fit on. And lastly, with this uh, modification, once you remove the factory fairing that the Scout comes with, uh, you'll see that your wires above the headlight are encased in a like very simple fabric sleeve. And it's actually, it does not look good. That's the only way I can put it. Um, you don't want to take the factory fairing off and just leave it looking the way that it does. I, I don't think it looks neat or uh, or slick. So, um, But normally it's meant to be hidden behind the factory fairing. It just sort of holds the wires in place uh, and, and the whole thing's supposed to be covered up. But it's meant to be hidden behind the factory fairing. So the dealership offers a factory cover for this area. It's a like a cable cover. You can order straight from the dealership um, and you'll see that it actually has the Indian logo printed on the front of it. Um, and it just attaches very easily above your headlight. There's a, um, you know, it comes with the screws and there's a spot for them to screw in. Uh, it's really not hard to do. Now, uh, it does an okay job of covering the wires. Like it does go in front of them, uh, but the wires are still a little bit messy, especially with that uh, fabric sleeve off, uh, which you'll see, you'll see when you go to do it. Um, but if you really want to make it look good and you want to get those wires hidden, uh, I recommend getting some black shrink tubing and take the extra time, uh, to make, to make it look neat under that cover. Um, but that being said, I did not do that. So I just installed the cover and my Memphis shades fairing stays on all the time. You can see the Indian logo behind, uh, the Memphis shades fairing through the see-through area. Uh, and I think it looks like it just looks great. Um, but you know, if you, uh, if you're real stickler for detail, you might want to clean up those, uh, those wires, especially if you plan on riding with just that cable cover on and taking the fairing off. Okay. Uh, number four, uh, and this doesn't really apply inside the USA. Um, but outside of the USA, when these bikes are sold, rather than having the side mount license plate holder, they are sold with a plastic, uh, V arm. I don't know what you would call it, but that's the only way I can describe it. And it mounts to the rear of the fender. It actually looks like the part of the fender that's been cut off, uh, like a silhouette of it. It's black plastic. Um, anyways, I, I really just don't, I don't like it anyways, just on principle. I mean, if you're going to shorten your fender, why would you add on this piece that makes it look almost like a full I fender know. again? So one day I rode, uh, this bike to work. And when I got there, I discovered my license plate was just completely missing. It's just gone. Um, the arm looked totally fine. Um, it was just the actual plate and the plate holder itself was really gone. And I didn't notice any issues on the way to work. It was just gone. So um, I had to call the, the dealership and see what was going on. They were a little confused when I explained it to them. For a while, I thought maybe someone had stolen it uh, while it was parked or something. Maybe somebody had ripped it off. I, didn't, I just couldn't figure it out. Um, but it turns out that a few owners uh, with the style of arm on the rear fender of the Scout Bobber, um, they've had the same issue. So it took a little while to track them down, but I found out that, you know, this is a common problem. And what happens is if you hit like a pothole or a bump, um, that plate holder can catch the rear tire. The actual plate will go down and, and just for a second make contact with the tread on that tire. And it is easy to rip off um, just because of the way it's made. It will rip right off. 
So for that reason, uh, I strongly recommend going to another style of license plate holder. I wanted to go with Indian's own holder because it mounts very easily to the bike and it has the proper wiring uh, for the, the license plate light with it. Um, there's no splicing or difficult wire pulling uh, through the bike to get it installed uh, because, you know, it's meant to be installed there and just uh, mount and fit uh, with everything that's already there. So uh, with the side uh, plate holder, what you do is, first of all, you unscrew the V-arm. It's got uh, two uh, Allen bolts on the underside um, on each side. So you take those off, you end up with four bolts or extra and that's just gone. Um, it's got a wire that goes into the left side uh, fender guard um, that comes off. It also comes off with two bolts. And if you if you take it off and you take a look, you'll see that wire coming out of that V-arm and it just connects to a, like a, a clip there that's made for it. So when you get the, um, uh, the side mount plate holder, it literally just screws in with those same Allen bolts on the left side. Uh, so you screw up upwards from the bottom and it has a wire that comes out as well and it just goes into that uh, fender uh, guard um, and it clips right into that same uh, cable. I don't know, but um, that was a big modification I thought was really important, especially since I had to go pay to get a new license plate um, and I didn't want that to have to happen again. So uh, number five, and this is not so much a recommendation as a warning, I guess, um, but the stock seats for the Scout and the Scout Bobber uh, which is either the standard cushion seat or the uh, what they call the solo saddle seat. It's uh, like a Springer style upgrade. Um, they're widely reported by many people to be uncomfortable. So I went with the solo saddle seat uh, because I love the look of it. And I like that it raises the rider up just a little bit. Um, you know, I, I believe it just goes up one more inch, um, but it gives you a totally different riding experience. And uh, you know, of course the bike is very low. So any difference uh, is quite noticeable. Now the number one recommendation online for a cushion seat, uh, if anybody's looking to change over the factory cushion seat is from Corbin. I, I've seen a lot, a lot of people talking about Corbin seats. I've met, read a lot of reviews saying that they make a great product. Um, but you know, of course, like anything, there's others who prefer different third-party companies. Uh, I have seen complaints online about their customer service. Um, however, you know, if you're just buying a seat and you're lucky enough to never have to deal with customer service, apparently the seats are pretty good. Um, I've never dealt with them, so I can't, I can't recommend them, uh, really myself, but I can tell you, you may be looking, uh, for a third party seat for the Scout or the Bobber, uh, after you've owned it for a while. For the, uh, Springer style seats, um, the, like first off, the Solo Saddle seat is not a Springer. Uh, Springer seat actually has a spring and it, uh, adds to, um, I guess the, the, you know, like the rear shocks, it, it's, it's a lot easier on your body riding the bike when you've got a Springer seat because, uh, you know, it takes some of the, um, uh, the bumps and stuff out of the road, uh, and because your seat is actually bouncing. Now, yeah, a bobber isn't technically meant for long rides, but more and more I find I want to do entire day trips with this bike. And recently I saw a true Springer seat that's actually made for the Scout Bobber. So having the factory seat, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not going to recommend where to go. Um, but I would say, you know, do some research. And after owning your bike for a while, if you start wondering about making it more comfortable to ride, if you're looking at different options to make that bike more comfortable, the seat is definitely a first choice uh, for modifications to make. Anybody that's owned them uh, that has a lot of experience will tell you that. Anyways, uh, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the video. If you like this video, uh, please just click like on YouTube. Thank you.